good guys hope you're doing well have you ever had a situation where you have gotten some advice from a professional photographer and it just quite wasn't really good advice at all today's video we're gonna be going over five worst advice tips that are given from professional photographers that you probably should ignore it looks like it's gonna start raining here um, we're supposed to have some thunderstorms hoping they hold off but if they do come through uh, we'll get into the Jeep and finish the video. If not, and they hold off, we'll go on a short hike as well afterwards to get some photos. Uh, there's a really cool lighthouse that I want to get some photos of as well over there. So it seems like a lot of the pros will tell you that you need to shoot in a low ISO. Now this does have its advantages, don't get me wrong. However, with modern day technology in these modern cameras today that can really manage higher ISOs really, really well, as well as a lot of the software that's coming out for editing and post-processing that pretty much eliminates the need to continuously always have a lower ISO setting on your camera. These softwares are just amazing with what they can do. So the next one is sharpness is everything until it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, just like that, it starts coming down. Sharpness is everything. And I agree to a slightly minute point. You don't want your photo to be blurry, obviously. You don't want it to be out of focus. You know, you want it to be sharp in a sense. Let's have some real talk here, photographer to photographer, that nobody, and I mean nobody, zooms in to 200% on their photos, other than us photographers. No client puts their, the photo up to their freaking face, right? Up to their nose to try to find and pick apart the flaws in the photo, other than other photographers. In fact, you want it less sharp, the bigger the print. Take billboards, for example. If you're very far away from a billboard, further you're away from it, the more sharp and clear the image is on a billboard when you're driving on the highway, right? But if you were to get right up on that billboard, it is pixelated heavily. You almost couldn't even tell what the photo is because of how pixelated it is. If we're printing our work, you really don't want it to be tack sharp. You don't really want it to be, you know, extremely sharp as a lot of these pros are trying to say that we need our photographs. The further you are from the subject in the photograph, the less sharp you want it. And the larger you print a print, the less sharp you want it. The more sharp you have that image, the more grain that you're gonna bring into the image, the more noise that you're gonna bring in the image, the more artifacts that you're gonna create within your image. So no, you don't always want an image to be tack sharp. Only us photographers pick out those things we don't like about the photograph. Nobody else notices. Definitely don't confuse what I'm saying about having tack sharp images with in focus images. Those are two totally different things. See, let's see, next one, next one. Some professionals will be on the side of gear matters and some professionals will be on the side of gear does not matter. Uh, I'm on the side of it doesn't matter until it does. Let me explain. Some pros will sit there and say that you cannot get amazing or great photographs with budget gear because it limits them. It limits their ability to get the shot they're going after. Now, I agree to a point that, you know, if you're being limited and held back from your gear and you're not able to get the outcome and results that you're looking for, then yeah, of course you need to upgrade. Of course you need to uh, get into something that's going to get the finished product done, especially if you're a professional and you're doing this for a living and you're doing this for a client. Here is a really good example. I have shot since 2019 with the Canon RP, which is a beginner's entry level, full frame mirrorless camera. I just think that any camera that's five years old or newer can take phenomenal photos. It's all about up here. It's all about the eyes and the, the brain of the photographer and the vision and the art and the, the creativity. Don't feel bad if you have a beginner's kit. Upgrade it when you're ready, but use what you have. Use what you have. Don't feel guilty and shoot for yourself. If a photographer, whether they are a professional or not, is telling you that you cannot get great shots, award-winning shots even, 
with just budget entry level gear. They're just trying to make themselves feel better about themselves, honestly. I personally have seen better photos sometimes from a beginner's kit versus somebody out there who thinks that they're a pro in the bee's knees and their artwork isn't as good. Yeah, so don't listen to that garbage. Don't listen to that nonsense. The next one is getting low is vital. Now, hold on, okay? I've been known to say in past videos about getting low, getting eye level with your subject, and that is important, okay? I'm not, like, downplaying that at all. It gives a new, a different perspective. It does tell a different story. However, I think it's beaten to death. You need, you need, you need. Ugh, I hate that word, you need. Sometimes, though, guys, getting low is not always the answer. A really good example of this is getting the habitat within the frame not just focusing so much just on that wildlife but it's about telling the whole story the whole picture I know there's gonna be just some purists out there that hate that advice uh, and I'm all for getting low I'm all for getting eye level I, it, it is intimate it, it's intimate with the subject you, you should always include that in your portfolio but it's not always about that it's about being different you know when you line up ten different photographers and Almost virtually all their photos look virtually almost the same because they're told a certain way to do things, you know what I mean? And they don't branch out and they don't try to explore and they don't try to be different and they don't try to have their, their own unique style and they're not trying to just express an emotion differently than everybody else. Well, then you're left with cookie cutter photographers. Well, break the rules. You know, learn the rules like a pro to break them like an artist. I always say that. Learn the rules of photography composition, rule of thirds, all these things that we're told about Photography 101, learn them like a pro to break them later on down the road as an artist. That, that's how you get good with your craft. That's how you learn and grow as a photographer. Staying humble, but then branching out to be different in your art is how we grow and learn and mature as a photographer. Now, I really think we need to retrain our brains and what we're taught after we learn the basics of lighting. It seems like a lot of the times we're really concerned and we're really focused on what other people are gonna think of our photography and B, our technique and the way we approach photography. Look friends, photography is art. And art is subjective. It looks vastly different for everybody. Do you imagine some artists like Van Gogh or even Bob Ross even in recent years like being told that after you learn the basics of something that you're being restricted, you have to be staying in this, this little tiny little box that you can't get out of with your art, with your creativity? Yeah, guys, that's bullshit. Don't listen to that garbage at all. Don't think that it's gospel, okay? Don't take for what a lot of the pros say is gospel. I am a huge advocate for circling yourself around other photographers that think differently than you do, that create differently than you do. Taking a little bit of a piece of the humble pie and, and forming a community of like-minded individuals who are just different. We shouldn't shoot the same. We shouldn't have the same compositions. We shouldn't have the same type of editing styles. <laughs> All right, next one. A lot of professional photographers will tell you that you need to get off auto mode and you need to get on manual mode. Okay, now hold up a sec. Don't crucify me just yet, guys. Hear me out. Shooting in manual is good because it gives you more uh, control. But, and I say this with a big but, a lot of the times the situation calls to stay in auto mode. If I'm really honest, I shoot a lot of my photos in aperture priority, which is, in a sense, a form of auto mode. Aperture priority or shutter priority. There's times where I'm shooting in those or auto ISO. I'm not always just putting it in manual and just on the fly trying to change things as the conditions. I'm just saying that if you are like me and you shoot in some form of automatic mode, whether it's automatic, aperture priority, shutter priority, where you're choosing one setting and the camera is choosing the others for you per the situation and per the lighting conditions while you're out there. It's not perfect, which is why a lot of people choose manual. It's not perfect. However, it will get the shot you're looking for 80 to 90% of the time. It just will. In today's modern cameras, it just will. Any photographer, any professional that will say that you, you know, you need to get off auto and you need to start shooting in manual mode, they need to understand that there are certain situations where getting the shot will be easier and more efficient 
if you have the camera set in some form of automatic mode. I would also venture to say that if we're truly honest with ourselves, including professionals, there's a lot of situations where pros also use those automatic settings as well. Yes, the rain has stopped guys. The sun is coming out from under the clouds. So it looks like it's gonna be a great opportunity for a sunset as well as getting out there and getting some photos of the wildlife. But the last piece of advice that I think is horrible that pros do like to throw out there and that is the need to go out there and shoot at golden hour and blue hour. Hold up now. I love me some blue hour. I love me some golden hour. We're probably gonna get some really, really good shots of golden hour along the lake at this lighthouse that's right around the corner right here. So I love me some golden hour, all right? But it's not gospel. Again, it's not gospel. Don't take that advice that you need to go shoot only at those restricted times. That's where you're gonna get the best light. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, even in cloudy weather, even in overcast weather, even in the rain, in a snowstorm, in a thunderstorm, you know, even in those types of conditions where the weather is just not cooperating, sometimes that makes for some amazing, amazing photography. Those are cool opportunities to get out there outside of that box that I was talking about, right? That we're told that we have to stay in. It is very important that we keep the priority of just getting out with our cameras and taking the photos with what allotted small amount of time that we have. Overcast conditions often make for the best photos because the sky and the cloud now become a soft box for your subjects. If you're chasing that golden hour, if you're chasing the perfect light, if you're chasing the blue hour and you're chasing that perfect light, yes, get out there during those times. But I am here to encourage you guys to not stay in that box, to not take that advice as gospel. Remember, there's no such thing as a bad photograph only a missed opportunity. Chase the light all we want. We can go on a light chasing adventure as much as we want for the perfect lighting, okay? But we should be chasing the adventure. We should be chasing the experience of nature. This trail is uh, actually fairly known, I've been told, as a prime location for some owls. What a treat that would be, guys, to be out here one of these days uh, to capture an owl. I haven't had many of those, so it'd be nice to add that to my portfolio for sure. We've got a water break, let's keep going. Well, it looks like it's starting to rain here, but where the lighthouse is and the lakeshore is this way. So we should be good for a nice sunset tonight. But uh, let's see what else we can get in the bucket and then head towards that lighthouse. Whoa, look at that downpour, guys. Check that out. <laughs> Check out that downpour, man. I just got caught in that sucker. Came on real quick. But check it out. Let's head to the lake shore real quick for that sunset. Wow, 
I'll tell you what, there is nothing better than either chasing after a good thunderstorm for some photos or getting away from a good thunderstorm for some photos. <laughs> clouds on the radar are supposed to move through here very shortly and we should get a fabulous sunset crossing our fingers guys <laughs> there's also a lighthouse that is right about there that as the sun sets over the west over the horizon right there we should get a good shot get some shots along the water's edge here and then we'll come back to the jeep and set up camp for that sunset. So I found a really cool rock right here and as the water is coming over it, it's cascading into like a small little a waterfall kind of look. I really like it. So we're going to throw that up real quick too and get that in the bucket. We're gonna try to get a close-up shot of the lighthouse. We've got about another hour or so till sunset. All I gotta do is come down here and see this opening right here between the two rocks. I'm gonna use that as my foreground and kind of just bring it the camera down just a little bit, like right there, to get a great photo of the lighthouse kind of peeking in between the rocks as the foreground. Let me know what you guys think about those shots. Oh, guys, 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 this is gonna be an amazing sunset. We're gonna get back to the Jeep, sit back, relax, get some shots in the bucket, but I just wanna thank each and every single one of you guys first that has subscribed to the channel, that continue to uh, give a comment, like, share, or even becoming a member of the channel. It all helps out uh, for even $1.99 a month just a, the amount of a cup of coffee. You guys get a couple extra perks. But I do want to thank each and every single one of you guys who continue to support the channel. It would not be what it is today if not for all of you guys, so thank you.
And guys, what a beautiful, beautiful sunset that was. And it's not even fully down yet. Today's journal entry of the day is one thing that I can improve on on my photography. And that would be what I just discussed. And that is not staying in the box, the rule box, so to speak. <laughs> So let's put that down for today. Remember guys, there is no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. Get outdoors and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you with your cameras. And don't always listen to the professionals because sometimes there's good advice and well, sometimes there's horrible advice. Until the next one guys, God bless, cheers.